bring us out to YouTube. Could you explain publicly, because people have called me to say, how do I find this meeting? Could you explain to people who might call their neighbors or relatives and say, this is how you get onto YouTube? Would you mind doing that? Um, yes. Thank you. Um, do you want to do, do you want us to do that at the top of the meeting or just when we post it next time, counselor? Uh, whatever the city council president thinks is, is allowable. That's fine. Thank you. Assistant, Assistant city clerk, if you could just, just quickly go over if anybody wants to now tell people how to get on to YouTube to follow this meeting, that'd be greatly appreciated. Okay. Um, so we'll call the roll. So the first thing I have to do is I just have to identify a couple numbers. I got seven, eight, one, six, nine, oh, three, six, two, two. Who is that? McCourt. That's Phil McCourt. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then three, one, four, three, one, zero, zero. Is that the mayor? Yes, that's I. That is me. I should no, whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I am all set, Mr. President, in terms of naming people, but um, if you, uh, WCAC, are we on WCAC now? I don't even know if they're answering. Uh, no, we're not live on not live. TV. Uh, the audio is not live yet. On okay, TV. but we will be at some point. Yes, as soon as the meeting is called to order. Okay. Uh, who is 781-718-7574? 718-7574, who are you? Joe Vizard, is that you? Hello? That's Pat O'Brien. That's Patrick, Councillor O'Brien. I'm 820-7316. I'm sorry, Councillor O'Brien. What did you say the number was you're, you're calling under? 781-820-7316. I'm joining now visual anyway. Okay, so I don't need to worry. It looks like that number dropped off anyway. Okay, uh, Mr. President, I'm all set. <coughs> okay. Waltham City Council will come to order on Monday, April 27, 2020. Clerk We'll call the rule. George A. Darcy the third. Present. Karen Dunn. Present. Sean T. Durkee. Present. Kathy Ann Harris. Present. Joseph P. Lacava. Present. Anthony LaFosse. Present. Randall J. LeBlanc. Present. Christine A. Mackin. Present. John J. McLaughlin. Present. Kathleen B. McMenamin. Present. Patrick J. O'Brien. Present. Jonathan Paz. Present. Thomas M. Stanley. Present. Carlos A. Vidal. Present. President Paul J. Brasco. Present. 15 present, Mr. President. All rise while the city clerk recites the council prayer. Almighty God, we ask thy guidance in all our deliberations. Please remain standing while the city council president leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. To and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. Council of Blank. Thank you very much, Mr. President. At this time, I would like to ask that we take a moment of silence for all our veterans fighting for our freedom and those supporting them all over the world. In addition, I would like to extend this moment of silence for all of the first responders, medical staff, and nurses, and all of those assisting in need, and especially 
those who have passed away from the COVID-19 virus. You are all in our thoughts and prayers as we take this moment of silence. Moment of silence, please. Please remain standing. Vice President McMinnell. Thank you very much, Mr. President and members of the City Council. Uh, it is with great, great sadness that I ask us all to remain standing for a moment of silence in memory of former City Council President John Duffy, who passed away on April 23rd. Uh, John Duffy was former president of the Waltham City Council. He was all things Waltham and all things Irish. Uh, he was born in Waltham to Alice and Larry Duffy, and Waltham was his home all the way. After he uh, graduated from Waltham High School, he entered the Navy and uh, served on three aircraft carriers, the Intrepid, the Midway, and the Coral Sea. And when he returned home as a naval veteran to Waltham, found the love of his life, Mary McGarry, and married Mary McGarry, who became Mary McGarry Duffy. Together, they lived on Willow Street and raised four sons, four magnificent sons, John and his wife, Kim, Jim and his wife, Donna, Stephen and his wife, Mary Ann, and Stephen Duffy is the principal of the Plimpton School here in Waltham, and Andrew Duffy. The four children gave John and Mary eight grandchildren, and he leaves all of that grieving family behind, including his siblings, Janet McGuire, who at one time worked in our city clerk's office, and his mother of Waltham High School hockey coach, John McGuire, his sibling Paul Duffy, and his sibling Alice Duffy. John is predeceased by his brother, Lieutenant Lawrence Duffy, United States Army. And in addition to all of the uh, formidable contributions John made to the city of Waltham, he also served as our superintendent of cemeteries, at one point a member of the Board of Survey and Planning, which he is today, and a member of the Historical Society. I've lost a great friend, and Waltham has lost a great man in John Duffy. There will be a future mass at St. Jude's, and that's according to Frank Joyce's website. So I ask the members of our city council to remember a great city councilor, John Duffy. Moment of silence, please. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. You may be seated. On a personal note, I was in the cemetery one day with Mr. Duffy after I was first elected, and he, have, he told me that I was crazy for running and getting elected, but he once told me that I better study the rules of the city council and know them better than anybody else, and that's just on a personal note. So, uh, yeah, that's what the advice I give to everybody is always know the rules of the city council, and that comes from Mr. Duffy. This meeting is being transmitted live on City of Waltham YouTube channel and on the Waltham Community Access Corporation Mac channel. Channel 43 for Verizon subscribers, Channel 98 for the Comcast subscribers, and Channel 15 for the RCN subscribers and being uh, audio taped for a future broadcast. Uh, the wish of the committee with regards to the approval of the minutes of April 13th, 2020. So Motion by Councilor Blank for approval on the minutes. On the motion for approval, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Yes, have it. <laughs> Clerk, continue with communications from the mayor. Communications from the mayor. Mr. President. Councilor Cava. Yes, I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules to act on matters 1, 2, 5, 8, 9, 12, and 13 collectively. On the motion to suspend the rules to act on those matters collectively, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Or object there being none the clerk will read those matters before we approve them communication number one 
The mayor respectfully requests acceptance of 100 nurse type masks for the first responders from Enbridge, the parent company of Algonquin Gas. Communication number two, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of hand sanitizers from Senior Whole Health. Communication number five, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of hand sanitizers from Johnson Compounding and Wellness. Communication number eight, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a gift of 1,400 pairs of gloves from the Waltham Land Trust. Communication number nine, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of 1,000 surgical face masks and 500 hand sanitizers from our first responders from India Market Bukhari and Sons, Inc., Yusef Bukhari. Communication number 12, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a gift of hotel accommodations for frontline workers from Keith Gilbert, owner of the Holiday Inn Express. Communication number 13, the mayor respectfully <clears throat> requests acceptance of 200 surgical masks from Ocean State Job Lot, 300 cloth masks from Dr. Mariella Vargas, hand sewn by Linda Cowan, Nijensen and 480 N95 masks from Natick Labs. On the motion to suspend the rules to act on this matter without committee reference, on the motion to suspend the rules, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or object? The ayes have it. Councilor Cava makes a motion to approve of the matters just stated by the city clerk. On the motion for approval, roll call is required. George A. Darcy the third. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Shanti Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMenamin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yes. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. 14 in favor, Mr. President. By your action, you've approved the matters collectively. Clerk will continue. Mr. President. Council LaCava. I now ask to suspend the rules to act on matters 3, 4, 6, 7, 10, 11, 16, and 21 collectively. On the motion to suspend the rules to act on these matters collectively. On the motion to suspend the rules, all in favor say aye. 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 Oppose or object? There being, there being none, would the clerk read the matters? Communication number three, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a gift in the amount of $2,500 from the Waltham Lions Club for a food drive to be administered by the city. Communication number four, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a gift in the amount of $500 from Ken King for a food drive to be administered by the city. Communication number six, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of 10 $75 gift certificates, five to Pizzy Farm and five to the Chateau resident for Waltham veterans from Michael R. Connors Esquire. Communication number seven, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a gift of $500 from James and Sharon Duda to be used to aid any Waltham resident in need as a result of the COVID-19 situation. Communication number 10, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a gift in the amount of $1,000 from Kurt D. Everett to be used for a first responder appreciation day. Communication number 11, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a gift of $500 from David and Jen Vitone to Waltham people and families in need during these difficult times. Communication number 16, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of 40 gift certificates in the amount of $25 each from the Waltham Lions Club to the Director of Veterans Services for Veterans. Communication number 21, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a gift in the amount of $10,000 from Sally and Robert Collini for a food drive to be administered by the city. Motion by Council LaCaver is to suspend the rules to act on these matters without committee reference. On the motion to suspend the rules, all in favor say aye or object. Aye. 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 Those that object. There being none, Council LaCaver makes a motion for approval. On the motion for approval, Council LaCaver, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before this vote, I just wanted to point out I, I, it's no secret as to why we moved um, all of these matters to, to pass tonight without going to committee. 
Um, we as a council continue to see how amazing our community can be. And we are completely grateful to see those who are able to help come through in this fashion. Uh, these are some, some of these gifts are unbelievable. And for the community to come through the way they have, I believe it just goes to show you how grateful and how strong this community is. And for that, we say thank you. And we wanna make sure proper thank, you, proper thank yous are sent out to all who have donated in this time. Thank you. This has definitely just demonstrated the community spirit that we have here in Waltham Council of Calvary. I truly appreciate that. And we offer our thanks to everyone that has donated to the city and worked so hard on behalf of the citizens of Waltham. On the motion for approval, for the, for the comments, there being none, on the motion for approval, all in favor say aye. I'm sorry. Aye. I'm sorry. I apologize. Roll call by the city clerk. All right. George A. Darcy the third. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Sean T. Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Anthony LaFosse. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMenamin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yes. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. All right. And that's 14 in favor, Mr. President. By your action, you will approve of the matters collectively. Or to continue with communications. Communication number 14. The mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a grant from Massachusetts Historical Commission in the amount of $15,000 for a historical survey. Refer to the Finance Committee. Number 15, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of two grants from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, a social infrastructure grant in the amount of $649 and a summer learning grant for teen room programming in the amount of $2,000. Refer to the Finance Committee. Communication number 17, the mayor respectfully requests an appropriation in the amount of $200,000 for emergency assistance to small businesses in the art community affected by COVID-19. Refer to the Finance Committee. Communication number 18, the mayor respectfully requests an appropriation in the amount of $120,000 for emergency assistance to Waltham citizens affected by COVID-19 for already received applications until the CPC program is operational. Mr. President. Council Lacob. Thank you. I would like to suspend the rules to act on this matter without committee reference. Council LaCava makes a motion to suspend the rules to act on this matter without committee reference. On the motion to suspend the rules, all in favor say aye. 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 Check aye. or oppose. There being none, the matter is before us. Council LaCava, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as stated in the communication from the mayor, this is something that we approved um, last week, two weeks ago, and these funds just need to be made available before the CPC money comes through. I, I believe if anyone does have questions, the mayor is on the line, but this is something that we have already approved. And would, um, judging by the amount of um, applicants, these funds are needed. So I will make a motion for approval. On the motion for approval, questions by counselors. There being none on the motion for approval by Council Acaba. Clerk, call the roll. George A. Darcy the third. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Sean T. Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Randall J. LeBlanc. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. All right. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMenamin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yes. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. 14 in favor, Mr. President. By your action, you have approved of the, applic uh, the appropriation of $120,000 for emergency assistance to the Waltham Citizens. Clerk will continue. Communication number 19. Uh, I apologize. 
The mayor respectfully requests a transfer of funds in the amount of $4,264 to pay the general liability umbrella insurance policy for the property at 554 Lexington Street. For the finance committee. Communication number 20. The mayor respectfully requests a transfer of funds in the amount of $5,100 to supplement existing funds to pay the cyber insurance premium to protect the city against computer hacking. For the finance committee. Applications and licenses. For the uh, license and franchise committee. Orders, ordinances, and resolutions. We have four resolutions, Mr. President. Clerk, if you'd read the first resolution. Resolution in the city council in the year 2020. Public service recognition week, thanking all of our city of Waltham employees. Whereas since 1985, the president and Congress have designated the first full week in May as public service recognition week, dedicating a week to recognize and honor the men and women who serve our nation as local state and federal government employees. And whereas public service recognition week is an opportunity to celebrate and acknowledge all city of Waltham employees and all departments who have chosen public service as a career and who work every day to be helpful and to provide our citizens with exceptional service. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Waltham City Council recognize May 3rd through May 9th, 2020 as Public Service Recognition Week and be it further resolved that the Waltham City Council recognize and express our sincere thanks and gratitude to all City of Waltham employees for the work they do every day in service to the city of Waltham and its citizens, which makes Waltham one of the best places to live in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And be it further resolved that the Waltham City Council also express our sincere thanks for outstanding public service to all city employees in these challenging times of COVID-19. Thank you for keeping the city of Waltham safe for all. Respectfully submitted, Paul J. Brasco, City Council President, and all the members of the Waltham City Council. Before recognizing the chair of the Kevin M. Ritzy Ad Hoc Committee, Councilor Harris, I just want to remind all councilors that if you're not speaking, that you may want to mute yourself as the microphones on your computers pick up your backgrounds and we can hear uh, some, some things in the background. So, Councilor Harris, Ward 8 Councilor, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, I just want to take a moment and, um, you know, I, I know this resolution is something that's given every year and is a long held tradition, both <clears throat> nationally and in the city of Waltham to recognize and establish a moment to say thanks to the dedicated public service that is provided here in the city of Waltham, but also across the Commonwealth and across the United States. I think as expressed by uh, Councilor Lacava earlier, we are in extraordinary times with COVID-19 and our city is stressed to the max. Our public servants and our public employees have risen to the occasion um, at every level. And I just want to take a moment. It's an honor to serve as chair, but I know that the, the city council joins me in this thank you um, to all of our public servants in the city of Waltham. And we want to thank them for their dedicated service, their extra hours of time, and also um, all their efforts that have made Waltham really safe for all. And um, I just want to say thank you. So I yield, I yield the floor here, but I'm, I'm asking uh, to make a motion uh, for approval here tonight so that we can get this out to department heads and, and at least let them know in writing through email that we appreciate them. And then we'll do something more formal on the other side of COVID-19 where we can all get together. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilor Harris makes a motion to suspend the rules that act on this matter without committee reference. On the motion to suspend the rules, Aye. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose or object? There being none, Councilor Harris makes a motion for approval of the resolution. On the motion for approval, clerk will call the roll. George A. Darcy III. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Sean T. Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMenamin. 
Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yes. Thomas yes. M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. By your action, you've approved. Uh, clerk, call the chair. <laughs> Paul J. Brasco, president. Yes, yes absolutely. By your action, you've approved of the resolution. We appreciate all the hard work and dedication of every single employee of the city of Waltham. Uh, and especially during this very difficult time. Clerk will continue with the next resolution. Resolution concerning management of COVID-19 in the Waltham community, April 27th, 2020. Whereas COVID-19 is a rapidly spreading, highly transmissible and deadly virus currently impacting our community. And whereas the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has declared a state of emergency with shelter in place recommendations until May 4th, school closures through the end of the school year and child care closures until June 29th. And whereas in the absence of a governmental mandate to provide shelter, people are living in close proximity to one another in Waltham streets, permanent shelters and temporary shelters in conditions that pose a severe imminent threat to the health, safety and well-being of themselves and others. And whereas there is also a significant number of suspected cases of community transmission and likely further significant increases in transmission with other shelter facilities in the Commonwealth experiencing a 40% or higher rate of COVID-19 infections. And whereas Waltham's health department, together with public health experts at the local, state, and national level, recognize that limiting interactions among people as much as possible is proven to slow transmission of COVID-19. The United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has found that the potential for pre-symptomatic transmission underscores the importance of social distancing, including the avoidance of congregate <coughs> settings to reduce COVID-19 spread. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Waltham City Council work with the Mayor's Office, Health Department, Middlesex Human Service Agency, and other organizations providing support, testing, and care for people experiencing homelessness. Respectfully submitted, Christine A. Mackin, Council Award 7, Jonathan Paz, Council Award 9, Patrick J. O'Brien, Councilor at Large. Councilor Mackin, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, so I have had a lot of people contact me recently and ask two questions. Uh, the first is, what is Waltham doing to help protect and keep safe people who are experiencing homelessness during this outbreak? And what is going on with the big tents that are up on the Waltham Common? And the answer to each of those questions is the other. Um, there has not been a huge amount of transparency about long-term planning for the people who are experiencing homelessness who are currently using the shelter um, and using the tent. So I would like to use this resolution as an opportunity to open up a dialogue between the council, the mayor and other city departments to get in writing what the plans are and to help figure out a path forward to make sure everybody's being treated with care and consideration in a way that maximizes the health and safety of the entire Waltham community. So I have two requests I would like to pass on this resolution, but I will save those until other co-sponsors have had a chance to speak. Okay, thank you, Councilor Mackin. Further speakers? Uh, President, Councilor O'Brien. Councilor O'Brien, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I am happy to sign on to this resolution with the Ward 7 Councilor. And um, it's obviously a very important matter. Um, Today I saw in Boston that some of the homeless who have tested positive for COVID-19 have now uh, not been able to go back to the homeless shelters and have been referred to uh, some of the hospitals in Boston to uh, for shelter overnight. So I think this is very timely for Waltham to see what we are doing to try to help our homeless population. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor O'Brien. Councilor Paz. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I would like to commend the efforts of the mayor, uh, the Middlesex Human Services Agency, uh, the Community Day Center for their heroic efforts. Uh, I think we have a long way to go. Uh, I've received multiple um, just inquiries from uh, my constituents who are particularly elderly. And we have two senior centers in Ward 9 that are particularly vulnerable um, and having homeless folk uh, populating the Charles River walkway is pretty concerning. Um, so yeah, I just would like to uh, express my concern and also um, 
how do you know just proclaim this question, which is how can we all proactively address the systemic issues producing homeless people? Uh, so we don't just think of like a patch solution, but we can think of how do we address this um, in terms of what A, what is producing the precarious conditions that allow people to go homeless and B, um, how do we get them off the streets in a more um, orderly fashion? Um, I'm not sure if two tents are enough, um, but yeah, I would really uh, appreciate everyone's support um, in thinking of this creatively and from a, hum from a more human perspective. Uh, but thank you so much, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor Paz. Councilor Mackin, you had a, a request? Yes, thank you. Um, I have them both in writing and I can provide them to the clerk uh, after the meeting. And they're both oh, rather lengthy, so I will try to enunciate very clearly. Um, okay, one request at a time and read the first request, yes. Council. Yes, uh, the first request is that the mayor provide to the council in writing a plan for accommodating people experiencing homelessness using the tents on the common or other resources with information about a planned closure date and or conditions that must be met before closure. What conditions would trigger a reopening of the tent if there's a second surge of the disease and a written policy for determining under what conditions the tent will remain open during the day to shelter from inclement weather, uh, naming the person or the authority, authoritative body responsible for that decision. You've all heard a sense of the request on the request on the request. Questions by counselors? There being none. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose or object? There being none, the request is approved. Council Mackin, thank you, you all. Before? Thank you all very much. The second request is that the health department provide to the council in writing a plan for providing testing for people experiencing homelessness with information on how results will be communicated to the individual, what further services or referrals will be provided to people with a positive result, and how the privacy of those people tested will be ensured. You've all heard a sense of the request. On the request, questions by counselors. President Brasco, uh, Councilor Durkee has a question. Councilor Durkee, you have the floor. Um, just a quick question. Uh, there's a shortage of testing materials, and I don't know that that um, requiring testing of homeless people just for the sake of being homeless is uh, merited. So there may be other people who are vulnerable or, or in need, and I'm not sure how this uh, question uh, addresses that. So. You know, we've, you've heard in the news that, that um, I think it was in Boston that something like 40% of homeless people have already been exposed to it, and they may be carriers and, and not infected by it. But I don't know how we get around um, testing people who may not need it in front of maybe first responders or others who need it and where we just don't have a test. Um, so that, that's my concern. Can someone address that? Councilor Durkee, is that a question directed to the Ward 7 Councilor? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Through the chair to the Ward 7 Councilor, would you like to address the matter of the question by Councilor Durkee from Ward 7? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I'll start by saying this is not intended to be a mandate that we do mass testing. It's just a request to know if there are any plans to provide any testing whatsoever and what those plans are. Um, Many of the shelter facilities in Boston and Cambridge have managed to secure tests for every individual in the shelter, and that's where that 40% positive rate comes from. The reason that I wanted to request this information about a plan is because many of Waltham's people experiencing homelessness don't have access to health care, don't have a primary care physician, and are not aware of the resources to get referrals for testing if they do have symptoms. And then the additional danger of people who are asymptomatic working in a congregate setting, exposing not only each other, but the first responders who are responsible for maintaining security and safety at the tent um, and other workers who are going in to try to help the situation. So this is an information gathering effort. Um, and I know that there's limited availability of tests throughout the Commonwealth. So I just would like to know if we have a plan, what the plan is, and then we can work forward from there. 
Uh, Does that answer your question, uh, Councilor Durkee? Yes, it is. Through you to the, to the uh, Councilor, thank you. That answered my question. Absolutely. On the request by Councilor Mackin. Question. For the questions by Councilors. Yes, Mr. President. Councilor Lacava. Councilor Lacava, you have the floor. Yes, I've, I've, this is mm -hmm. no issues on this request at all. I just don't know if the Councilor from Ward 7 has been in contact with um, Michelle Feely from the Health Department um, or if she has asked a time frame on this. I just know how busy um, both she and the mayor have been and if this is a, a time thing, I'm just trying to think of their plates right now and how full they are and just wanted to know what the expect expectation was um, with that. Thank you, Councilor Cava. Through you to the Council from Ward 7, Council Mackin, can you answer and address that issue? Uh, thank you. I have not been in touch with Michelle Feely, the Director of the Health Department on this matter. Um, I hope that we'll have a response by the time we get to council next week so we can discuss it and plan forward. And I'm not going to put a time limit on this request. Um, I'm definitely respectful that there is an enormous amount going on. So if she needs to defer that to the MHSA or some other body to let us know what they're working on, that's absolutely acceptable. Um, and if it takes a little bit longer than normal circumstances to get a response back, uh, that's completely fine with me. I don't have a set expectation on timeline. Does that answer your question, Councilor Lacalle? Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Councilor. Okay. On the request by Councilor Mackin. On the request, further questions by Councilors? There being none. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose or object? There being none, this matter, mm. Councillor Mackin, this matter would be normally referred to the Economic and Community Development Committee. What is your wish? Mm -hmm. So um, I will defer to you to make the final decision, but I would like to suggest that committee as a whole might be positioned well to move forward on this since that committee is having regular meetings. And if we do need to make follow-up requests, it might be beneficial to have the whole council available. Um, however, I will let you make that final decision. Councilor Mackin, I, although I know that this addresses all city council members and, and everybody has a stake in it, I think it would be beneficial if it was held in the committee where you could discuss it and bring forth a lot of the information that you may have or request it. So. I, okay. I would. I will refer to the Economic Community Development Committee. If you feel after that that it has to be discharged from that committee and moved to the committee as a whole, then that's where it would go. Um, but right now, I'll refer the matter to the Economic and Community Development Committee. Thank you very much, Councilor Brasco. Thank you, Councilor Mac uh, Mackin. Uh, clerk, continue with resolutions. In the City Council in the year 2020. Whereas the need to preserve and expand open space in our city is a goal advocated by both elected officials and our citizens. And whereas the city's undeveloped land is at risk daily. And whereas the city council's majority vote on March 9th, 2020 to relinquish the six acre parcel at 131 R Lincoln Street, otherwise known as Jericho Hill to the Waltham School Committee for a proposed playing field and parking structure removes six acres from the Waltham's open space inventory and whereas the city of Waltham bought this land as a friendly taking in 2001 and this land has been enjoyed by the taxpayers for the past 19 years as open space and currently represents a cornerstone of the entire western greenway which runs from Belmont to Prospect Hill. Now therefore be it resolved that the Waltham City Council request that the Waltham School Committee set aside an undeveloped parcel that meets or exceeds six acres on the future site of the new high school at 554 Lexington Street Campus, 46 acre Stigmatine property to be used as open space in perpetuity and to connect the Western Greenway as proposed in 2001. And be it further resolved that the six acre parcel be conservation restricted and the stone walls, some of which date back to the 1600s throughout be preserved and protected. Respectfully submitted, Karen Dunn, Council Award 2, Carlos A. Vidal, Councilor at Large. Councilor Dunn, you have the floor. 
Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, so the resolution is pretty explanatory. The concept is something that I brought up when we first heard about the proposed usage of Jericho Hill. Um, at that time, it appeared there was a significant amount of acreage within the 554 Lexington Street campus that would be available and prime for conservation and protection. I have a map of the currently unused area of the property, but that's only as of tonight's school building committee meeting dating uh, tonight, which is 427, April 27th, um, including an overlay of where the stone walls are. And I'll share this with the clerk to distribute uh, for our discussion at a later date. Um, obviously, the building plans are still in progress, but it's good to start the dialogue on this issue. And as this is not currently a time sensitive matter, I would ask uh, that the president please refer this resolution to the Committee of the Whole for the entire council to deliberate at the appropriate time. Okay, Council Dunn, again, typically this would be a, a matter that would be referred to the Economic Community Development Committee. Do you feel that you want this? referred to the committee of the whole because it's not time sensitive is that i'm sorry uh no not not because it's not time sensitive i just wanted to put it on the docket for when we're finally uh decided on where exactly all the school buildings will be placed there the current open acreage would then be open for discussion and i think it would be a good idea for the entire council to have a chance to discuss that if they so wish okay there were other other speakers with regards to the resolution by Council Adon? Can only be one. There would only be one. Further speakers? Uh, this is Councillor Vidal speaking. Councillor Vidal. Thank you very much. Just, cool. uh, just, just a um, quick mention. I, I pretty much, uh, I, I, I want to, Councillor Adon pretty much has said everything that we need to say here. And I, Thank you for the opportunity, of course, to sign on to this, and I hope we have an open dialogue when the time is right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Vidal. Uh, for the matter of the Committee of the Whole. Clerk, continue. Resolution in the City Council in the year 2020. Whereas in 1872, a special day was set aside for the planting of trees. This day is called Arbor Day. And whereas 2020 is the 148th anniversary of the holiday, an Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource that gives us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and beautifies our community, and whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas in observance of Arbor Day, City Tree Warden Kevin Thompson and his crew planted a tree in the city of Waltham on April 24th, 2020, with a ceremony to be held at a later date. Therefore, be it resolved that the Waltham City Council recognizes Friday, April 24th, 2012, as the 148th anniversary celebration of Arbor Day and invites all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day by attending the tree planting ceremony when a date is determined. Respectfully submitted, Joseph P. LaCava, Council Award 5, Paul J. Brasco, City Council President and Councilor at Large, and all the members of the Waltham City Council. Councilor Cobb. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> um, as the resolu resolution says, this is uh, quite ex explanatory. This is a resolution that would normally come forward each year by the former Ward 9 Councilor Lo Robert Logan. And when Michael Chasen of Public Works asked me to do so, I was more than delighted to uh, step up. Um, everyone who knows or who has worked with um, the tree warden, Kevin Thompson, knows that whether you or your constituents believe a tree should come down, he will fight tooth and nail to make sure if it is uh, able to stay up, he will make sure it stays up. He does believe in his work and we do thank him for that. Um, of course, there was no ceremony this year because of the trying times we are in. So when the, um, we are all cleared, there will be a date set where there will be a ceremony. And we do ask that all of you um, who wish to come out will come out for this. Again, this resolution, um, is, is something that helps us, the city of Waltham, be um, get 
be designated as a tree city in USA, which is something we are all proud of. Um, so with that, if there, I will um, relinquish to any other speakers, but then I would like to um, have this motion, have this resolution approved tonight. Okay, on the motion to spend the rules to act in this matter without committee reference, on the motion to spend the rules, all in favor say aye. 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 Aye, aye. oppose or object. There being none, the matter is before us. Any further speakers by councilors? There being none, Council Lacava makes a motion for approval of the resolution as read. On the motion for approval, all in favor, clerk call the roll. George A. Darcy the third. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Shanti Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMenamin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yes. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. There was the vote, Chair vote yes. 15 in favor, Mr. President. By your action, you have approved of the resolution. Clerk, continue. The final resolution, Mr. President. Resolution concerning, concerning lowering the meals tax, April 27th, 2020. Whereas Waltham has been known as Restaurant Row, as restaurants are the heart of downtown Waltham. And whereas the current meals tax rate in Waltham is 7%, which comprises a 6.25% state tax and a 0.75% local option tax. And whereas the local option meals tax became effective in Waltham on July 1st, 2010, and whereas most restaurants in Waltham are locally owned small businesses, and whereas the recent COVID-19 crisis has drastically reduced restaurant income, and thus has negatively affected many of its lower wage workers. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city council consider removing the 0.75% local option meals tax. Respectfully submitted, George A. Darcy III, Councilor Ward 3. Councilor Darcy, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, Massachusetts imposes a sales tax on meals that are sold by or bought by restaurants um, or any part of a restaurant. The tax is 6.25% of the sales price of the meal. And for historical information, the Massachusetts state uh, meals tax was increased from 5% to 6.25 in August of 2009. And also in August 2009, uh, the state legislature gave towns and cities the option of charging an additional 0.75% on food sold by restaurants. The city of Waltham passed uh, the additional 0.75 local option meals tax on July 1st, 2010. So in summary, as the clerk mentioned, uh, the 7% meals tax is comprised of a 6.25 state tax and a 0.75 Waltham tax. And I'm asking the city council to remove even if temporarily the local option meals tax from its current. Restaurants operate on a, on a tight margin and it would be a shame if we lose any of our restaurants due to this crisis. Several new restaurants have just opened, including Gustavo's on um, Moody, Pepino's Dosa, and Stacion de Federal at 123 Moody. As our economy recovers from COVID, we want people to dine in Waltham once again. Many restaurant workers live in Waltham and are at the lower end of the pay scale. They make the bulk of their money on tips which relies on high traffic. We want to look at every tool in our basket so that our Waltham restaurants survive and prosper going forward. So let's roll back the meals tax surcharge until our restaurants are back operating healthy once again. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Dossi. I always appreciate anybody trying to roll back any tax here. So uh, that being said, Councilor, any further, uh, there's no other co-sponsors on the 
the resolution or further matter of the economic and community development. Also want to remind councils any late file communications as resolutions, although this is very important. Again, it deals with the, uh, the COVID-19 virus and the emergency purposes of some of the resolutions that are brought forth. Please again, try because we are always, at least in these past few weeks, and as moving forward, uh, communicating remotely on the city councils, we hope that uh, these resolutions will be brought forth in the Thursday packet so people have the ability to discuss these issues before the Monday night meetings. Thank you, Councilor Dossi. Again, that matter is referred to the Economic Community Development Committee. Clerk, continue. Thank you. Committee reports, Committee of the Whole. The Committee of the Whole recommends confirmation of the appointment of Catherine D. Lockman, 5 High Rock Circle, Waltham, as an assistant city solicitor for a term expiring February 28th, 2022. Vice President McMinnon moves the action of the committee to the action of the council. Roll calls required. George A. Darcy III. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Sean T. Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMenamin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yes. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos Vidal. Yes. Chair, wish the vote, Chair, wish yes. 15 in favor, Mr. President. By your action, you will approve the appointment of Catherine D. Laughlin as Assistant City Solicitor for a term expiring February 28, 2022. Clerk, continue. The Committee of the Whole recommends approval of a funding allotment totaling $103,477 for cable access funds for Verizon PEG support to be paid to the Waltham Community Access Corporation for studio equipment, field equipment, and the last phase of the studio lighting equipment. Vice President McMinnon moves the action committee the action of the council. Roll calls required. George A. Darcy III. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Sean T. Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMiniman. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yes. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. 14 in favor, Mr. President. By your action, you approve the matter. Let's continue. The Finance Committee recommends approval of an appropriation of funds totaling $169,921.50 to purchase 150 Dell Microsoft Windows 7 desktop units for city departments. Council of Cava moves the action of the committee. The action of the council roll call. George A. Darcy III. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. John T. Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMenamin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yes. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. 14 in favor, none opposed. By your action, you approve the matter. Continue. Finance Committee recommends acceptance of various memorabilia items from Kathleen B. McMenamin. Council of Council, moves the action committee to the action of the council. Roll call. Roger Darcy III. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Sean T. Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMenamin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yes. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. 14 in favor, none opposed. By your action, you have approved of the matter. Please make sure that the vice president gets a thank you note. <clears throat> 
I will, Mr. President. Unfinished business and other business. Request for an extension of time on petition for special permit 1017 to 1019 Main Street and 1025 to 1075 Main <clears throat> Street. Mr. President, Councilor McLaughlin, I'd like to uh, move to suspend Rule 39 to act on this matter without committee reference. Councilor McLaughlin makes a motion to suspend Rule 39 to act on this matter without committee reference. On the motion to suspend the rules, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposer, opposer object. There being none, the matter is before us. Councilor McLaughlin, you have the floor. I'd move uh, approval of this exp uh, uh, extension of time. Councilor McLaughlin moves the ex uh, approval of the extension for 1017 1019 Main Street. 1025, 1075 Main Street. The motion for approval of extension of time. Clerk, call the roll. George A. Darcy the third. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Shanti Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMenamin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yeah. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. 14 in favor, none opposed. By your action, you have approved the extension of time. Clerk, continue. Request for an extension of time on petition for special permit 790 Main Street. Mr. President, Councilor McLaughlin, again, I move to suspend Rule 39 to act on this matter without committee reference. Councilor McLaughlin makes a motion to suspend Rule 39 to act on the matter without committee reference on the motion to suspend the rules. All in favor say aye. 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 Those are object. Aye. There being none, Council McLaughlin moves with approval of the extension of time on the motion for approval of the extension of time, 790 Main Street, Waltham. Clerk, call the roll. George A. Darcy the third. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Shanti Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMenamin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yes. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. 14 in favor, none opposed. By your action, you'll approve the extension of time. Clerk, continue. Mm -hmm. Request for an extension of time on petition for special permit 44 William Street, 44 R. William Street, 56 William Street, and 114 Felton Street. President Brasco, Councilor McLaughlin, again, I move to suspend Rule 39 to act on this matter without committee reference. Councilor McLaughlin makes a motion to suspend Rule 39 to act on this matter without committee reference on the motion to suspend the rules. All in favor say aye. 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 Those are object. There being none, on the motion by Council McLaughlin for approval, the extension of time. The motion for approval, clerk, call the roll. George A. Darcy the third. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Shanti Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMenamin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yes. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. 14 in favor, none opposed. By your action, you have approved the extension of time. Clerk, continue. Request for an extension of time on petition for special permit 94 Russell Street. Uh, Council President Brasco, uh, Council McLaughlin here. I'd like to uh, move to suspend Rule 39 to act on this matter without committee reference. Council McLaughlin makes a motion to suspend Rule 39 to act on this matter without committee reference on the motion to suspend the rules. All in favor say aye. 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 Those are object. There being none, Council McLaughlin makes a motion for approval of the extension of time, 94 Russell Street. A motion for approval, clerk call roll. George A. Darcy the third. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Chanti Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. Christine A. Mackin. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Kathleen B. McMenamin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. Yes. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. 14 in favor. 
None opposed. By your action, you have approved an extension of time. Minor modification to special permit number 31913, 470, 486, and 504 Totten Pond Road, now known as 480, 494, and 500 Totten Pond Road. Refer to the ordinance and rules committee. Minor modification to special permit for 1560 Trapolo Road. Refer to the ordinance and rules committee. That brings us to the end of the docket, Mr. President. Mr. Assist, uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, before we conclude any other matters before the city council, before we adjourn, I'd like to take this opportunity uh, to uh, give the opportunity to the city clerk just to address um, the city council with regards to the steps his office is taking over the past few weeks with regards to the uh, pandemic and how the city clerk's office is operating currently. Mr. City Clerk. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, after the initial shutdown of City Hall, uh, and in accordance with your direction, the uh, Assistant City Clerk and I were coming in periodically and remaining available by phone to address time sensitive matters. Uh, we soon began coming into the office daily as more work needed to be done. Uh, at this point, we are up to date on responding to all internet mail in requests for birth, death and marriage certificates. We get dozens of those requests weekly, sometimes daily. All nomination papers for candidates running in the September state primary submitted to this office have been reviewed, certified, and returned to the candidates or their representatives. And that was done well before the original deadline set by the Secretary of State as of uh, April 28th. Uh, since that date has been extended, we are continuing to receive and certify nomination papers uh, for candidates. Uh, we continue to post meeting notices in compliance with the open meeting law for all city boards and commissions. We're responding to requests for public records. We are registering voters. We are processing absentee ballot requests. We are issuing licenses and business certificates and responding to inquiries by phone. In short, we're doing all the things we do in the city clerk's office. Uh, I want to point out that most telephone calls that we answer during the day are not for our office. Currently, there is not a switchboard operator in City Hall. As many telephone calls default to this office, we spend a good deal of our time transferring calls to the treasurer, the public works department, the assessors, and other city departments. I'm not complaining about that. I just wanted uh, my bosses to know that uh, we spend a good deal of our time here uh, uh, answering calls and uh, uh, transferring them to other departments. We're nice. If uh, we can answer the questions from constituents, we answer them. But uh, if the matters are more appropriately uh, in the realm of other departments, we do transfer the calls. Uh, recently, we started bringing back uh, members of the staff uh, after the initial shutdown of City Hall. Uh, we had asked all members of our staff, other than <coughs> Assistant City Clerk and myself, to stay home for their own safety. Uh, last week, we started bringing people back uh, one at a time, one, one additional staff member on each weekday for half a day uh, so that they can uh, assist us with the phones and uh, start uh, working on some of the, some of the work uh, uh, that they may need to, uh, to get to uh, so that uh, they're not overwhelmed when they come back to the office. And as you know, Mr. President, we've continued to support the city council by preparing dockets, orders, minutes, and conducting remote city council meetings. Until recently, the assistant city clerk and I have really conducted the operations of the office. As I said, about a week ago, we started bringing the members of the staff uh, back for uh, short durations of time each week. Although City Hall is closed to the public, uh, we are continuing to operate here on a daily basis and serve the public. Things aren't ideal. Not everybody's getting things as quickly as they would like, but they are getting them. I'm very proud of the work we've done and we will continue to do. I, I now wanna quickly address what I'm most concerned about, Mr. President, is that when City Hall reopens, when we uh, reopen City Hall, uh, we are a retail operation here. So we are particularly uh, 
vulnerable because our staff members deal with uh, scores of uh, constituents and citizens each day. Uh, there isn't a time during the day where there aren't several people at the counter in the city clerk's office. So we are giving a lot of thought this week uh, to the ways in which we can make this office safe for our employees and for the people coming in to do business here, social distancing. In addition to the adequate supply of gloves, masks, and sanitizers that we hope to have for our staff, uh, we need to consider and we are looking at installing protective glass or a plexiglass on our counter. We are looking at num limiting the number of people that can be at the counter at any particular time. We are looking at reorganizing the furniture in our office to separate our staff so that they, they can maintain a, a safe distance from one another. Uh, we are looking at, uh, in terms of limiting people in the office, we're probably going to come up with a system of queuing people from the hallway into the city clerk's office so that uh, there is only one person in the clerk's office at a time receiving services. Uh, and, and one other thing, Mr. President, that I would like to bring to the city council, since you are our bosses, I think it would be extremely beneficial to our office when we reopen, and we don't know when that's going to be, but when we reopen, uh, it would be beneficial if on one day a week, perhaps Friday, if we could close the office to the public at noontime so that we would have, and I'm only asking for this on a temporary basis, so that the staff can get the work done uh, that that piles up during the course of the week and during the course of the day, because a lot of time is spent handing people, you know, rep dealing with customers at the counter. And sometimes it would be helpful to just have a brief shutdown for a few hours to allow people to catch up with the work. Right now, most of the work, all of the work that's coming into the clerk's office is either by internet or mail-in or call-in. So we don't have customers at the counter, obviously, at this point. Uh, but we are continuing to do business. We are getting things done. And uh, uh, our, primary, our primary concern has been, uh, during this whole thing, has been the health and safety of the people who work here, uh, while at the same time trying to serve uh, all of the... Uh, the needs of the public and the city council. So that, I'll stop now, Mr. President. That's just a brief summary of how we've been operating and uh, some thoughts about what we need to do uh, before we reopen to the public. Thank you, Mr. City Clerk. We, we just wanted to uh, you know, have an update from you as to, all, for all of the councils, the vice president of the city council as, as myself, you know, we want the citizens of Waltham that are concerned about what services are being provided to be updated, as well as our, all of our colleagues. And, and again, I want to state that you guys are doing a great job, uh, but not, not only that, I, I want to acknowledge, again, the mayor, uh, the mayor who's on the line this evening. I leave my office very late in the evening, and I come in very early in the morning sometimes, and, and the mayor is, I've always seen her there. So I want to acknowledge how much she's doing, again, during this, this pandemic her updates and everything that she's done for the community and the citizens of Waltham. Um, I, I wanted to this evening be able to say that we will be opening and hopefully reconvening in public session in our chambers on May 11th, but we, we don't have a determined date and time for that yet. So the mayor has asked for plans and I encourage councils to reach out to me and to the vice president as to how we might move forward when we do open the, the city hall back up open to the public um, there are things that we're going to have to address, the council seating, uh, how we utilize the space with public uh, in, you know, social distancing. So I want councils to consider those things as we move forward. We're working together in a cooperative fashion to address all the citizens of Waltham's issues and our own healthy health and safety while conducting the city's businesses. Um, you know, I, again, I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for continuing to adhere to Governor Baker's stay-at-home order. Uh, this, this is very tough times for everybody, and I just appreciate all that everyone has done. It truly demonstrates the community and our spirit, and uh, I thank everyone. Again, there is no further matters on the agenda of the Waltham City Council for April 27, 2020. I wish to the Waltham City Council. Move to adjourn. The motion by Councilor Darcy to adjourn. On the motion to adjourn. 
Aye. All in favor, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or object? There being none, Waltham City Council stand in adjournment at 8.40 p.m. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.